Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In today's short Mathematical Age of Empires question, I'm going to ask, is it really worth it to get the Paladin upgrade? I know what you're thinking, okay, the Paladin upgrade is super good, Paladins are way better than Cavaliers, but at the same time, have you seen that price? 1300 food and 750 gold. That late in the game, gold's pretty important. So for me, I normally play as the Japanese. The Japanese don't get the Paladin upgrade, and I always justify it as, well, it's really expensive and I wouldn't be building enough Paladins to really get that to pay off anyway. But today, we're actually going to dive into that and we're going to look and see exactly how many would you have to build in order to make that pay off. As part of answering this question, first we have to know how good is the Cavalier and how good is the Paladin. Just looking at the Cavalier completely unupgraded, 120 health points, 12 attack, and 4 armor. Assuming you have all the blacksmith upgrades and you have bloodlines, that goes up to 140 health points, 16 attack, and 11 armor in total. And if you act now for the low low price of 1300 food and 750 gold, which is obviously the cost of 10 Cavaliers, you can upgrade them all to Paladin. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to ignore that food cost because really by the time you're making paladins, you should have enough farmers that food isn't really the problem. The problem is gold on the map. Okay, so now it gets a little bit complicated because it depends, are we talking about just the base unit or are we talking about if you have all the upgrades? On the screen there, I show all the paladin stats and in the green in brackets, I show how much of a percentage upgrade that is over the cavalier for the corresponding stat. As you can see, if you have all of the upgrades, because they affect both the Cavalier and the Paladin, that makes the percentage increase a little bit less. So now just looking at the Paladin improvement percentages in isolation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to average each of those columns, and then I'm going to average that averaged row. And so what we can ultimately say is maybe the Paladin represents about a 20% improvement. That's if you average 31%, 15%, and 15%. You can argue that those things should be weighted differently, but I've just weighted them all the same here. And we're going to say it's about a 20% improvement. You might disagree with me a little bit, but it won't be more than plus or minus 5%. Okay, so now we graph this relationship. Now this graph might look a little bit confusing, but basically the red represents the no paladin upgrade, so the relationship there is x equals y. So our x is how many cavaliers you've made, and on the y-axis we have the overall power on the field that you have. So if you build one cavalier, you get one cavalier of power on the field. If you build two, then you get two cavaliers on the field. So now what happens with the blue is that's if you get the Paladin upgrade. So right away, it's as if you've paid for 10 Cavaliers, you paid 750 gold, and you got nothing. You're basically a negative 10 Cavalier power because you've paid for 10 and you haven't actually gotten any, so you're in the hole. But since the Paladin is roughly 20% stronger than the Cavalier, if we can agree on that, then the relationship will be y equals 1.2x minus 10. So you're getting power on the field 20% faster by building Paladins, which costs the same as Cavaliers once you've done that upgrade. So if we look for the intersection on that system of linear equations, what we find is that when x equals 50, and x was the number of Cavaliers we're making, then we're getting the same amount of power on the field. What that says, if we convert it back to gold, is that if you're planning to spend 3,750 gold in total on your night line, then it's worth it to get the Paladin upgrade. If you're not going to spend that much gold, then you may as well just throw it right into Cavaliers. Think of it this way, if you only have 2,000 gold that you're going to spend, you're better off putting that all into Cavaliers and having a big army of Cavaliers than getting the upgrade and then only buying a few Paladins. At the same time, if you're going to spend 10,000 gold and you're just going to make a ton of them, you're better off getting the upgrade for the Paladin and having a bunch of really strong Paladins over 10 more Cavaliers. I hope that made sense. You can take a look at that graph, maybe pause the video and think about it for a little bit. I'm quite confident in those numbers as long as we can agree that the Paladin represents a 20% improvement over the Cavalier. So there you go. This hasn't changed my mind too much. Uh, about my play style really. It's probably about where I would have put it anyway. And in terms of the Japanese, I still feel like I'm not really missing out on that much as uh, not having the Paladin because I personally don't plan to invest that much gold into the night line over the course of the game on a typical play where I go to the Imperial Age. Okay, so thanks everybody for watching. I hope you learned something. Maybe it made you think about it a little bit more. Subscribe for more similar content and post a comment if you have any other mathematical questions that you want answered. Thanks everybody. I'm Spirit of the Law and we'll see you next time.